these players very accomplished. I'm dang, of course, Namor squats. Looks like players already underway here is Nam and Connor with Warden of the Inner Sky and Thraven Inspector. You can see that Thraven Inspector and the treasure token, or sorry, yeah, the clue token. I said treasure earlier, I think, as well. Uh, able to get to use for the scry on Warden of the Inner Sky. Yeah, you can tell it's uh, Boros Convoke because it's uh, turn one, turn two, and look at how many permanents are in play right there. Uh, Nam Dang, all course, tapped. Yes, coming off the uh, <laughs> convoking very efficiently. Nam Dang coming off a top eight at the RC uh, just a few weeks ago uh, uh, against uh, in the format that then would have been modern. So really uh, putting uh, the eternal formats through its paces here. Nam Dang leads out. With the creatures, we've got just some cantripping over from Connor's side. A crew, cl a cl clue crack there from Nam Dang to Looks get like a gleeful demolition. Actually, yes, going to add a go. bunch of bodies here. No spell pierce huge from uh, Connor. Doesn't wouldn't work even if he had it. Bunch of bodies, hard for Phoenix to deal with. Yeah, they, with the one mana open there, you're either looking to to interact with one card and one creature, and not a bunch of one ones and. <laughs> It's done. We're done. Wow. I've seen enough. Wow. <laughs> wow. I mean, you mentioned a little bit before we got into this match about the speed of both of these decks kind of being the namesake uh, as far as their identity in Pioneer. Uh, certainly, now I'm showing that with Boros Convoke, which we're going to get a look at right here. You know, we mentioned all four of, so you get a look at that right now, as well as a look at the sideboards. And after a game one like that, I don't even know how much you want to change. Works so great. <laughs> that's the look, that's why you play this deck, right? I you know, the the idea of, of of getting what some might call free wins is a really big draw to a deck where sometimes your good draw is just so good that no one can can deal with it. And that's what happened there. Nam Dang just comes out of the gate so fast that a Phoenix deck without a, a hand that could just spam a bunch of Phoenixes into play really fast. Just can't even hope to keep up um, without the sideboard options. So, yeah, so agree. looking at that, we, we've, we're looking at, at the Convoke sideboard here for Nam Dang. What do you want to change? Is there your, your against is at Phoenix, so they're going to be using their graveyard. They're also going to be attempting to interact with your board. Uh, is there anything in this sideboard that you think is just a, a must-have in this matchup? Uh, you don't have to worry about, I think, like any kind of like thing in the ice looks that we've seen in the past from Phoenix deck. So, you know, you can kind of leave the removal spells mostly at home. I don't want to leave too many. I don't want to make too many changes. Like you saw game one, we saw uh, this Phoenix not really able to answer a pile of permanents that well. They're going to bring in maybe a couple sweepers if that anger the gods shaped things. So you're going to want to hedge for that and maybe some like with um, like Thalia guarding with Raven. You can mm -hmm. also reach for things like invasion of Gobicon if you want to kind of get those proactively. And then you can also reach for the rest piece to really stymie the uh power of the phoenix deck without losing really anything yourself other than a little bit of tempo of course putting the card into play so i, I would reach for a couple of these two ofs i think you can shave down uh you know some of your uh, resolute reinforcements you can shave down some of your ornithopters things that would just get picked off It'd slow down a little bit make sure that all your game objects that you do play are impactful but i don't want to make too many changes like those are the only three cards i don't know that i want all of them i want to make like four changes max yeah, well, that was the point I was going to bring up, of course, is that we, you, when you're playing a 35 creature deck with a bunch of 4x creatures, you maybe only want to um, tinker so much before you're just not going to be able to convoke out um, the number of, of spells that you want having creatures early. So that's it is kind of a, a balancing act there of getting cards that are good in the matchup without diluting your own game plan. Yeah, it's definitely going to be part of the mix for Nam. And yeah, I, I would I would be surprised to see heavy sideboarding from his side. Connor, on the other hand, with some Is It Phoenix, I would expect a, a few more changes here. Yeah, definitely going to have to interact early. So the uh, any removal would be the name of the game, I believe, right? So um, looking at this, is it uh, the bringing in the sweepers, I imagine, as well, going a slightly slower, more controlling game plan here for Connor? Yeah, I, I would expect definitely the Anger of the Gods. Those are, I think, the slam dunks, being able to finally pick off multiple bodies with one card. That's something Phoenix doesn't really have access to in the main deck too, super mm -hmm. well. Because Mario Command can do an impression, not that great. Anger of the Gods is the real hammer. And then you can also hedge a little bit if you want for the recipe style stuff with cards like Crackling Drake and Young Pyromancer, if you want. Young Pyromancer are especially good at lining up against opposing 1-1. So I would, I would expect to see Young Pyromancer's uh, maybe a little bit less on the Crackling Drake style stuff, although it, Crackling Drake does survive anger, whereas Young Pyramids with anger, not that good, but maybe it's just fine to have both of your deck. Is Ledger Shredder going to be the start for Connor? Right. Well, you mentioned the 1-1. One, one. There is uh, the, the Epicure on Nam's side, but the Ledger Shredder, not only is it sort of a brick wall to 1-3, or to 1-1s, one the 1-3 one itself, but 
I think it's safe to say that Nam's going to be triggering that uh, ability on Legend Strider too. Oh yeah, and it, of course, gets to pull double duty with the connive ability, able to find the sweepers. And then, as soon as you get a first counter, the Legend Strider mm -hmm. survives Anger of the Gods. Plays very, very well with Anger of the Gods that are in the sideboard. And like you said, definitely going to trigger the uh, the Legend Strider is Nam if he's doing anything impactful. We'll see exactly what he does have dialed up. Yeah, there's the second spell already. <laughs> right now, great. there we go. Uh, it begins. It looks like a land pitch there. So no counter for the Shredder just yet. Nom, uh, we're convoking something now. We're getting... Activating um, Warden of the Inner Sky. Get that scry action going. One permanent short of doing it twice. But uh, I think that's just fine. Nom, very happy. Able to just trigger it there right immediately on turn two. Some blockers back. Young Pyromancer, there it is. And we discarded a land, so I'm actually a little bit flooded as Connor. Well, okay, there we go. Removal spell pointed. That's going to trigger both of Connor's cards. So look, hey, the good news if you're on Connor's side, it's turn three and you're still playing the game. <laughs> yeah, way better start for Connor. And it, this is kind of the difference when you know what's up and you're able to prepare for it. Phoenix, not great against going wide in game one. Game mm -hmm. two, and especially when you know it's coming, you have a lot of tools. And we're seeing that with both Ledger Shredder, you know, Pyromancer, you know, being able to handle a little bit of the going wide so you can't just get chipped down a bunch. Connor did not have this kind of setup at all in game one. We saw that lead to a, you mentioned, kind of free win for Nam. Uh, this game looking very, very different. And if you're a Connor fan, you have to like this look. Although sweepers now look bad, but young Pyromancer does a good job brick walling a lot of these smaller creatures. The Warden is still a little bit concerning, though. Did not have. Yeah, Nom definitely spell mastery through here. Not a, a an incredibly fast, uh, you know, play my cards, attack you turn. So definitely, Connor has got to be liking what he's seeing over from Nom's side. So Nom is just gonna have to figure out make the board go wide enough, start convoking, and and there's one of the key cards of the deck right there. Hitting the board. Oh wow. Thalia added to the mix as well, and you mentioned convoking. Here is convoking. It's gonna be mm -hmm. Knight Errant of Eos. Yeah, I think. Did Connor fire off the sorry impulse? I mean, maybe just to make a token on the warden of the inner sky. It's a one. It would have two. been to, uh, yeah. Okay, let's see. So, that's, <laughs> Con that. Connor's seen enough. We're done. Okay, you mentioned we're excited to be playing still on turn three. Connor is <laughs> done. Doesn't want to turn four. He heard wow. us talking about it. Wow. Done. <laughs> I guess. I guess that's the state of pioneer. I mean, when I think of pioneer, I don't. I don't think that turn three kills come to mind. Traditionally, it's grindier, Rakdos, Azorius. You, you may not this? like it, but uh, yeah, that is what peak performance in Pioneer looks like. Two turn three, <laughs> turn four wins right there for the Convoke player. Uh, sure. You have to have a plan, and I guess more so than having to just have a plan, you have to uh, be able to execute on that plan. And that means finding a sweeper, I guess, in the case of Visit Phoenix. It did not do it there. And a lightning fast match. At least both players will have an opportunity to go get a drink and refuel for the next round. Because both players are still very much in contention for the top eight. Yeah, absolutely. Both players you know, started this round undefeated. So maybe a much needed break for both players having had uh, you know a little bit of grindy, grindy matchups maybe otherwise. But yeah, that was uh, maybe among the fastest pioneer matches I've ever seen. <laughs> I, I don't know that I've ever seen it happen much faster. If it was, it's through Convoke. But um, you know, well, welcome into the booth, Drake, for the afternoon, right? We're going to be yeah. here uh, through the uh, through the top eight. We're going to take you all through uh, the home stretch of this tournament. And look, we got to start it off with some fireworks. <laughs> maybe we all could get a break in the process. Well, we're going to head down and interview Nam and uh, maybe hear a little bit about his approach to the uh, the matchup and his plan for the matchup, know, knowing going in, I'm sure, what's going on there. And then we should have a backup after that. So still plenty of magic to go to. Let's see if Nam is ready to hear from us. Not sure exactly what the status is there. Oh, okay. We're, right, we're, we're, we're getting set up. Not quite set up yet, but yeah. What, one thing I'm really interested to hear from Nam is his impression of the Phoenix matchup going in. I, I didn't seem perfect, but I, that was a performance like I would have never expected. Just well, not a yeah. lot of preparation to just ran him over. <laughs> yeah. Well, and that's a question too. Uh, you know, we're coming off. Um, it was regional championships a few months ago. were pioneer, right? So this is a matchup for anyone who would have been involved in that circuit, which Nam who top aided that uh, obviously was. So I, I suspect he's, he's got some, experience with all of these matchups but yeah and we'll hear if he has any uh any particular tech for this you know got to get his name and stuff adjusted there but now can you hear us 
I can't hear you. I think we're on the way there. Okay. Hello. Yeah. Oh, hello. All right. There we go. Hey, how's it going? Good. How are you? Doing awesome. And you are undefeated in what might be the fastest match of Pioneer. I think I've certainly in the last two years, but maybe yeah. ever. What happened? Um, I had a pretty fast start. My opponent kind of had a clunky hand, so they were kind of dead. So they just scooped it up early. Yeah, no kidding. Uh, do you, does the matchup normally play out like that? Like Boros Convoke versus Phoenix? Uh, no, not at all. I played the matchup quite a bit last night, and I was like one and nine against uh, Phoenix game ones. It's wow. just like Ledger Shredder on turn two is pretty hard to beat. Right. And he had that there, and you still just were able to overwhelm it there in game yep. two. She had the tools. Abby, an incredible performance. Talk to me a little bit about Convoke. Uh, choosing it for this tournament. You know, obviously the Pro Tours on the horizon and all that kind of stuff. What is What are your thoughts about Convoke coming into this tournament? Um, I picked a deck kind of at random. Uh, I was <laughs> playing Modern mostly for the past month leading up to the RC. Yeah. Uh, so I joined a call with a friend. He said he was playing Convoke and it was good enough for me. <laughs> well, it's uh, it's certainly working out for you, Nam. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it's your, your undefeated thus far uh has the deck sort of played out how you expect you know is it looked more like those games we just saw or is it uh you sort of got to explore sort of the more uh in-depth uh, lines the deck can find here um it's played out as expected i've mulligan a bunch which is kind of expected from the deck um just got to look for those fast hands okay well you're coming off a, a, a strong finish as well so uh, talk to us about your you're now undefeated in this tournament you're heading strong what, where is your mindset now? You're going to have some time to reset before your next round. Um, what's the key for you the rest of the way here? Uh, well, hopefully I could draw the next two rounds and, yeah, just rest up and kind of recoup focus. Mm -hmm. Makes a lot of sense. Well, you know, I, of course, I appreciate you talking to me. Uh, you know, if you have any final shout outs, feel free to do them now. But I appreciate you. Uh, you come and talk to us. And what a match. <laughs> well yeah. earned play for you. <laughs> yeah, that was a really nice match for me. It was nice and easy. So <laughs> thankful for that. <laughs> <laughs> Make sure to rub it in Connor's face. Yeah, of course. So well. <laughs> Gotta get my in. <laughs> well, thank you so much, Nob. Congratulations. And I'm sure we will be seeing more of you in the coming rounds. All right. Thank you. All right. Well, that was um, quite a grindy, you know, grindy match there. <laughs> You know, absolutely just so slogging. So let's uh, let's watch more <laughs> grindy magic, shall we? I believe we have a backup match that should have a very different texture from what we just witnessed. We might be uh, in Azores game Control. one. You know, we might yeah. still be in game one over here. <laughs> very easily. Maybe they're still looking at hands. Who knows? <laughs> Azorius well, Control. Well, that's what I wondered. Uh, that's a, that's a follow-up for Namo. I'm sure we'll talk to him again. Uh, is more time spent mulliganing or playing magic cards? <laughs> um. You know, it's got to be close. You mentioned there's a lot of mulligan. I think if those say anything, it's got to be you know, pretty even. You know, take, take a look at a hand, think about it, you know, whatever. <laughs> Ten-minute matches, maybe you get a lot of breaks, but he mentioned resting up. Like I said, there's some grindy stuff. I believe we're going down to, you mentioned they might still be game one. They are not. We are sideboarding for game number two. So we're going to be hopping into this match live. And like I mentioned, Azorius Control Mirror between May and Sean. Sean, a mainstay of our series Man, i don't think i've had as much of an opportunity to watch personally but right, doing well. very well here today at five and oh zoris control very very familiar to me see a lot of that on uh the nrg series so uh you know not super surprised to see that and with no more lies added to the mix definitely think that there's a lot more players interested in it and uh it's good matchup against convoke yeah that is <laughs> Certainly, um, we've seen one Convoke deck now at 6-0 and at least, so there's a, that's a good place you want to be, but you've got to slog your way through this Azorius Control mirror, uh, and maybe the, the Cyborg games, we're going to see how they play out here. May picked up the first one, so the 1-0 lead there, that means Sean is going to be on the play here, leads off, putting down a clue token. Looks like players are just going to be playing... Uh, Play card pass to turn back here really fast. Classic draw go. Some of my favorite magic. <laughs> I'll have you know. Yeah, deduce a nice pickup. That's a card I think we've seen in action a little bit already in addition to No More Lies. So multiple cards picked up for the Azorius Control deck from the Murders at Karlov Manor. No More Lies kind of picked out for its think twice impression, although it is slightly more mana efficient. You know, only four mana to get both cards versus uh, five 
So that's a little bit of an upgrade for decks looking to have a little something to do on turn two if you don't have to cast your no more lies or what have you. Yeah, and of course it it you know there can't you, you know having an artifact in play versus um, having to flash it back occasionally um, could be a thing that comes up, but it, it just allows you to keep churning, keep rolling through your deck, which is what you want in a matchup like this where land drops are key. And I I sat through a Pro Tour Finals uh, to I think it was Shoda and Carlos Ramal, and I think it was Drago for fourteen turns. <laughs> uh, they, they started discarding to hand size. That was where we were at. Uh, and that, um, hopefully not how this one goes, but the, the, the concept of the control matchups wanting to just make their land drops, have the um, answers ready and their mana available. When something does come up, looks like it, now players are fighting over uh, some cards on the board, or at least... I think it's Memory Deluge, but in response, we are sticking a Wandering Emperor. So, you know, kind of Sean picking the spot when May taps out. Normally, I mean, you don't really see people counter the draw spells that often, it, especially with No More Lies. Maybe that dynamic is going to change as the game goes mm -hmm. on and, you know, heuristics adjust. But here instead, choosing to stick his own threat, Wandering Emperor, of course, known for its flash ability, able to kind of pick its spot to get into play and maybe start making some tokens. We'll see exactly what he wants to do. Could grow the shark if he wants as an opposing shark that he's using to defend. Let's see what we want to do. I think we did grow the shark. Yeah, it seems like having this uh, uh, this this Wandering Emperor in play is going to be key just in that it's the biggest threat in play and you have resolved it successfully through a grip of whatever spells May might be having, which gives Sean priority on the board here. And now that requires May to try to answer back uh, with the removal spell, which does work. Of course, uh, I believe adds another uh, token over to Sean's side. So just trying to accumulate some small value here. Fires back with his own... Uh, removal spell on that shark untaps with a 3-3 in play yeah marshall otherworldly lights able to take care of the opposing shark which lets you start attacking and you like you mentioned we have those map tokens now we got a creature mm -hmm. we can target with them maybe start getting value out of that Let's see i think that's chrome host seed shark can't get a super great look there but it is it looks yes. like chrome host seed shark added to the mix and that's a huge problem if you're main yeah we're gonna fight over yeah. that one yeah that's that one if it resolves just accumulates value over so many turns that if it's in play even if it doesn't do a lot of damage to you it'll essentially do a lot of damage to you. right yeah, until but, that one's too much of a problem you okay know, there we go so we've got uh look like dovin's veto run uh to, to answer that however another spell fighting back i can't tell quite what that one is but the uh net effect is the shark is in play but the Chrome host seed shark is not. So the token stays, the value body does not, and now a wandering emperor back from May. You think May may now with Teferi here of Dominaria able to up taking a, a big call. problem, but these maps might actually be able to pressure it. Yeah, we're gonna leave the spell on top. That's actually gonna grow the shark to five. And now we can actually <laughs> threaten to kill the Teferi just with the shark using the map token. So actually, that's a great exchange there for Sean. Wow, what a uh, a concept of the the map tokens. You know the the old classic white removal spells that sometimes come with a downside turned out to be very real right there. The counters <laughs> growing the shark, taking out to fairy. That's kind of brutal. Uh, now that shark is very big on top of remove losing your planeswalk. Yeah, and may I mean a grip full of cards could be you know some sequence of draw spells, removal spells, or you know mm -hmm. expensive spells like we're seeing here, a wandering emperor. Uh, that you know we'll see if he wants to fight over that. You know the five five shark has done a lot. Wouldn't be surprised to see Sean be like, yeah, that's done its work. Take care of that one if you want. Yeah, we're gonna see what he has to respond afterwards. Memory deluge looks like the look. Well, both players resolving their format of spells. Okay, so. If you are in Sean's seat right here, you're looking at these top cards of your deck, trying to find an answer uh, to the Wandering Emperor. Of course, May has one mana open. What what are you hoping for to turn around things right here? I think one of your best ways to pressure Planeswalkers in this matchup is traditionally things like the Shark Typhoon. Mm -hmm. um, I believe Sean pretty low on those as far as his actual count. You know, he's just, for whatever reason, I guess, trying to rely more on things like the Wandering Emperor and what have you. Um so having used his one, I think he actually is out of those. So things like Chromo Seed Shark, those kinds of anything that can pressure the Wandering Emperor, your own Wandering Emperors, or even like a Teferi, you can sit down and start upticking and use removal spells to pick off all the, the relevant creatures. Like we're seeing a Get Lost going after a Shark of Maze, an Absorb to try to fight. Like these are the kinds of things you need to keep the board clear. And mm -hmm. that way you can get more advantage than this Wandering Emperor is generating. It doesn't win the game quickly, but it will win the game if all you're doing is drawing cards and not doing anything else. 
Yeah, makes sense. And there, uh, you, Sean attempted to answer it. It runs into an old school absorb there for May to uh, yeah. counter it, keep it. And um, now more tokens hitting the board. The, the value is starting to accumulate on May's side as Sean fires off another removal spell. And this Second one copy of get lost going after the chrome host is interesting yeah. over the wandering emperor i think that really shows a particular threat prioritization from right. sean well, yeah you're right but look the wandering emperor gets you one trigger a turn essentially as good as that is uh chrome host sheet shark can get out of control extremely quickly you see sean target it but he's still behind that is a, a planeswalker and just uh, sort of an, an amalgamation of tokens on may's side yeah. uh, dice everywhere is not a good sign for the other player yeah <laughs> 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 Azorius Ooh, Dice Factory now adds a Teferi and an additional set of triggers coming. Yeah, you know, players uh, make fun of make fun of the Convoke deck for just using a ton of dice. Thanks to Venerator locks it on Warden, all that yeah. stuff. Well, check out check out Azorius <laughs> Control. Just <laughs> dice everywhere, and here's Sean's Teferi. Maybe a little late to the party, and yeah, that's going to even no more lies. And he's seen enough. Both Planeswalkers in play. Already yeah, done. I think it's going from uh, going from uh, dice everywhere to dice nowhere. And look, a lightning fast Azorius control matchup, I guess. Both players playing very uh, expediently there in the mirror in the sideboarded game. But, and it, Sean got ahead first, got the first Planeswalker in play, but ultimately May was able to uh, land the last one, which is what matters. So, welcome back into the booth, everybody. We're here, <laughs> round six of the NRG series. Uh, and I guess that went a little faster than we thought. Look, the Boros Convoke is Phoenix matchup. All right, that, that one we expect, but. Uh, after what would have been uh, a, a bit of a, a back and forth of a game one, it had to have been game two goes pretty quick uh, over to May moving on with Azorius control there. Yeah, and I think what you saw there was the tap out phase. You know, you talk about the control matchup typically goes in phases. You have like the draw mm -hmm. go kind of jockeying for position. Then once a player finally picks their spot, taps out, it begins the second half where you start just tapping out every turn, seeing if you can answer everything and who can resolve more stuff. We saw that happen early, I think, as soon as we saw Sean start to miss a few land drops, which is something we didn't talk as much about in the match because he was able to cast his spells just fine. But the problem was May was consistently able to double spell, able to cast more spells. Yeah. And uh, when he tapped out for the Wandering Emperor, he really started that tap out phase a lot earlier than you would otherwise see in the Azorius Control matchup. And that really you know, kind of cannonballed the match and made it end way faster than you would otherwise expect. Yeah, no, that's a great point. Is that once that ball starts rolling, it kind of keeps going as players um jockey back and for forth and in the end it was may who was able to have the the essentially the mana for that second counter spell um to to protect the board and and snowball into a victory there yeah being able to answer the the sea charts was definitely what it's about and this is that's something i'm excited to talk to may about as well is kind of the the threat prioritization with Chrome Host Seed Shark, obviously these cheap uh, snowballing, if you will, creatures that come in off the sideboards, they're, they're basically there for these fair matchups, so you can accumulate advantage. But even in the face of Planeswalkers, we were seeing players firing off removal spells at the Seed Sharks, and I think that's mm -hmm. really telling. Like, like I said, it's a really important threat prioritization bit uh, when you're talking about the sideboard games. It really, at that point, it's so powerful, you have to warp your entire sideboard plan around not just yours, but theirs as well. And uh, yeah, assuming we're going to be able to get an interview with May, well, I'll have to hear from the production on that. But yeah, I believe yeah. we will, and I'm excited to hear about that. Yeah, I mean, look, that's magic at its best. If you think about some of the old uh, standard formats or, or modern formats where you have um, really powerful decks that run into each other go trade for trade and in the end all of these super powerful cards that they're playing are gone and you're left with a couple of small little bodies to try to poke through that's why the chromo seed shark tokens are so relevant when you have a, a two two or a, a three three that's going to go the distance even as you're slamming down to fairies and wandering emperors against each other yeah, that's, that's, that's interesting. So you, you mentioned in match about a, uh, you know, a finals you saw where players are just moving to discards in like turn 14 or whatever. And yeah. you, know, you mentioned these scrappy games that are, are end up with just like one or two cards left over and you kind of have to scrappily beat down with that. With the quality of cards that exist in Pioneer and the quality of cards that make decks these days, do you feel, I mean, you're someone that's been around this entire length of time. Do you feel mm -hmm. that you don't really have those really drawn out games anymore where you're just like beaten down with one thing because the leftovers are just more powerful? That is certainly part of it. Another part of it is that, you know, at some point in the design cycle, Wizards decided that people playing draw go for 15 turns and discarding the hand size was maybe not everything. <laughs> not appealing. Uh, so you ended up, you eventually at some point you, you moved to more of a tap out control type 
S build. And look, it's cool that in Pioneer Modern these days and with Azorius Control, you can kind of go both ways. And uh, like with uh, Emperor, it's a way to build up board threats, which in the way that the draw go decks wouldn't, uh, but still play at instant speed. So uh, you're, you're right. The, the, the thing, they go back and forth, but the haymakers kind of go back and forth. And all it takes is one turn with the Chrome Host Heat Shark, right? You, you, you slip through one turn with that thing and you're going to have now two or three tokens off of it uh, that are just going to go the distance once all of your other cards have traded one for one. So you're right. The, the, the things close out a little faster. Than that. Even land, I like am... say layer of the Hydra, right? That just allow you sure. to dump your mana in and close out games quicker as opposed to something like, say, a creeping tar pit that would take five <laughs> It's a little bit slower. Doesn't scale as well with your mana. Well, it looks like we have May ready to hear from us. So let's cut on over to that. Let's talk to her a little bit about the uh, Azorius Control Match. May, congratulations. I believe I cannot hear you, May. Sorry. It looks like I... we're, we're going to. Yeah. Is this thing on? Go. Okay, I can hear myself. Yeah, there we go. Now you're there. All right, cool. May, congrats. <laughs> yeah, it was a hard fought victory. Uh, we got there. I'm excited to end the for the first time today before the uh, round timer expires. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we were commenting on that. That was a fast match. I mean, you made quick work of, of Sean there in the control mirror. That was one of the fastest control mirrors I've ever seen. Oh, yeah. Um, I mean, game one, I, my hand was awful. I would do, like, all the anti-aggro cards, which I should have never packed because I haven't played a single aggro matchup today. Oh. <laughs> um, I think this is my third Buoy control mirror today. Uh, I wow. regret bringing this deck, but I'm okay. <laughs> Um, so I looked down at my hand, and it's just, like, two verdicts and, like, two lockdowns, I think. And I have, I cannot like draw counter magic to save my life so i was like all right what can i do i can attack my opponent to death and it just works <laughs> it just worked he didn't draw any of the anti-aggro can't counter the the attack to death plan well i want to ask a little bit you mentioned you've played the control matchup three times today right yeah with the cards that have been printed in murders of karlov manor namely no more lies being able to permanently exile like memory delusion stuff like that mm -hmm. has that changed the dynamic of the control mirror in pioneer knowing that your memory delusions and things are a little bit more vulnerable thanks to this new mana leak effect um i think just having like mana leak is great i mean i think everyone kind of agrees with that and the fact that exiles is kind of crazy i don't know who's printing these cards but i would not have added that <laughs> Um, You'd like a word. <laughs> yeah, so it is super relevant. Uh, it's happened to me a few times a day. It's happened to my opponent a few times a day. But I noticed most players will just forget that Memory Deluge exists in their graveyard anyway. So it functionally does the same thing Fair. as a Mana Leak would do. Um, <laughs> but in all seriousness, the, the card is good. It's really nice to have just like a card that counters everything. Um, and a lot of matches today have come down to just playing draw go until either one player just doesn't draw a land or one player just has enough to pay for um, the mana leak effect, basically. Um, mm -hmm. It's just great to have in the deck. I wish I knew what it did against aggro, but I guess we'll never learn. <laughs> hey, well, you know what? It's working out for you. If you're just able to beat up on the control mirror, maybe uh, you don't need these stinking, these stinking anti-aggro <laughs> cards. Um, the other card from Murders of Call of Manor, I'm seeing a little bit in the control mirror, and this is the last question I have about your deck list, but I do want to talk a little bit about it. Uh, Deduce, that's a card we saw from Sean. Mm. Didn't see any in your list. Is that something you're not excited about as much, or uh, wh where do you where do you land on that card? Um, as a control player, I think I'm ethically required to register 80 cards, and I okay. don't think I can add any more cantrips to my deck. Um, so just having the uh, Owen of the Seas is just better. Whereas I think... If I had reps going into this weekend, I would just play 60 card, probably without Kahira, and then run that card because I think that between the think twice with an uncountable basically back end is just like really good to have. So I think it's good. Um, I just don't have copies of it, uh, and also just Fair. didn't think to don't register it. it. I'll be <laughs> honest. <laughs> well, uh, well, look, what you registered is working out pretty well. You're 401 right now, a couple rounds to go. You're uh, aiming for that top eight. What are you, uh, you're going to have a little bit of time at least now before your next match. So you were able to close that one out in 2 0 fashion. Uh, you, what do you think is the key to success for you the rest of today? What are you hoping to, to execute on with your deck? Uh, the key to success is first finding someone who knows how to do tournament math uh, because I do not. <laughs> the, the second key is success. Underrated is uh i think just like not keeping like low land hands like i'm doing all day and be getting away with it um i think the deck's pretty strong 
I think I just have to draw the right half of it sometimes. Yeah. And I uh, just kind of hope that works. Uh, I haven't had, like, any time to, like, scout out, like, who's playing what. I know there's, like, a bunch of, like, really good players in the room. Um, but I'm basically flying blind. Uh, so maybe I'll go do that. But I think the main <laughs> thing is just, like, not falling asleep because I played, what is it, six rounds of Azorius Control? Mm -hmm. And I think I'm losing my mind. Just a little bit. <laughs> you know, you sound like someone that's really having a hard time. But you picked the deck. You did this to yourself. <laughs> uh, I don't own other cards. I never <laughs> want to own a foil deck in my entire life. I cannot physically shuffle the deck very well. Um, <laughs> it's been a yeah. struggle. But yeah. I haven't lost, so I guess I can't really complain. <laughs> Yeah, the duality you know, of Yorion. Correct. <laughs> Who's really winning? You might you might be five on water, you know, whatever, looking to maybe make top eight here, but who's who's actually winning? Everybody that showed up with aggro and dodged you, I guess. Pretty much. Everybody well, who has time between the rounds. Well, you do now. And we're we're no, I don't want to cut into that too much longer. I really <laughs> okay, appreciate you uh stopping and talk to us. And uh you have a nice, well-earned break ahead of you and some scouting maybe to do or whatever, tournament math, whatever you want to do in your time. All right, thank you very much. Thank you. Good luck the rest of the thank way. You, thank you. Well, I'll tell you who all else right. is winning, Drake. Uh, I think it's all of us who uh, got to watch that last round because that was uh, some 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 peak pioneer play, right? That was the format uh, condensed into a nutshell, and it was fun to watch Azorius Control play out like that. Uh, so those players are now going to be set up heading into round seven next as we march towards the top eight here at the NRG Championship Series uh, in Chicago. Yeah, two more rounds of Swiss. And uh, yeah, that, that'll do it for round number six. The quickest magic you'll ever see. You at home may have a little <laughs> bit of a break, but of course, don't go anywhere. We will be back round number seven here very shortly. And uh, yeah, cut to break. And we'll hear from our production when we're ready to start round number seven. Don't go anywhere.